We have had so many questions about what is the difference between the free and the paid versions of Zoom that this video is dedicated to answering that question, which has been asked on our channel, I don't know how many countless times over the past few weeks. The difference between Zoom paid and the Zoom free version, that's today on Dottotech. Steve Dotto here, how the heck you doing this fine day? And today I wanna to take on the topic of the difference between the free version of Zoom and the paid version of Zoom. Now it's important to recognize that as I record this particular demo, we're right in the middle of the, I hope we're in the middle of the COVID shutdown. I've been, I've been staying at home now for something around 40 or 45 days and my hair is starting to show the wear and tear of not having the, uh, the, 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 the attention of a good barber. Uh, so I apologize apologize for the Chia Pet type look. Obviously, Zoom has become a very big story as so many of us are doing our business meetings and connections online now. So many people have a question between the free and the paid version. And that problem is kind of exacerbated by the fact that we've done so many demos now on Zoom and people look at the screens that I show them on our channel and they look at the screens that they have on the options they have on their computer and they think perhaps that some of the differences are between the paid and the free version. And that's not always the case. Sometimes it's the case, but not always the case. So I thought since I've spent so much time answering questions on the difference between the Zoom free and Zoom or Zoom basic as they call it in Zoom Pro that we would cover it today. And here's the best place for us all to start is just go to the Zoom pricing page for your country. Now I'm here in Canada, so all of the pricing is in Canadian dollars. But if you take a look here, they'll have a list of all of the different services that are included for free. Now, as the epidemic continues, Zoom might be modifying some of the different security settings that they offer in the free and the pro version. Uh, so they, they, some of these things might subtly change. But essentially, philosophically, there is one major difference between the free and the paid version. As far as almost all of the functionality, they are identical. The difference is, with the free version, you can have unlimited calls one-on-one, -on -one, if you're just having a conversation with one other person. Unlimited time and unlimited number of calls. If you're having more than two people in the call, as soon as you have a third person in the call, you're limited to 40 minutes on the free version. You can have up to 100 people but you're still limited to 40 minutes. If you upgrade to the pro version, you have no time limit. Well, you have a 24 hour time limit now on your Zoom calls, 24 hours with groups up to 100. So that is the biggest difference. And that alone is what justifies paying for the pro account as opposed to the free account. That's the number one difference. The number two difference is if we scroll down, if you look through all of the different features here and you go into the web conferencing features, you'll find that we have the ability to record all of the calls in the free version, but you can only record it to your computer. You can record the calls onto your computer. With the pro version, you can record on into the cloud. So you have a cloud-based recording that you can more easily share with other members of the meeting, but you're limited to a gigabyte of space. So it's, it's uh, you know, you can save a couple of meetings if they're not too long, but you can't save that many meetings with one gigabyte. You have to go in and constantly clean it out. You can purchase more storage if you choose to store more meetings online on the cloud, but that's the second big difference. The third big difference you're not gonna see here all that evidently, but if the third one is an upgrade that they've done to the service to address the fact, to address the security concerns that many people have with Zoom calls being routed through different data centers. A lot of privacy concerns or and security concerns indicate that we want to have our Zoom calls routed through say North American or European data services and not through ones that are based in China. So with the paid system, you can actually determine what data centers process your calls. Now there will be a performance hit if you turn off too many data centers for your for your, uh, which is basically load balancing your calls, but you can increase the level of security that you might have, that you might desire internally as well with the paid version. And those are the biggest differences. All of the rest of the differences are very small and very subtle. But people get a little bit confused, I think, because when they look at their screens, sometimes some of the features are not available. And there's two sets of features that there were specifically talking about. 
The first set of features are the features regarding green screen and adding a virtual background. Now we've got a really nice video where we show you how to add a virtual background, a virtual video in the background, or use a green screen to even improve the quality of the virtual background more. Now, a lot of people don't have all of these options in their version of Zoom, and they think erroneously that that's because they have the free version and not the paid version. In fact, it has nothing to do with it being paid or free. Instead, Zoom actually looks at the capabilities of the hardware that you're driving your, that you're having your meeting on. And if you don't have enough processing power to properly resolve out the background and key out that background and put the virtual background in as a still or as a video, then Zoom won't give you the option to do that. It comes down to how much processing power you have, whether or not these options appear. So that is probably the point where most people have confusion. It's not whether it's paid or free, it's how much horsepower you have on your computer. Okay, let's do this. I'm going to launch my free version of Zoom here on my desktop and my paid version here on my notebook computer. And I'm going to bring up the windows and I'm going to compare the two uh, feature by feature uh, so that if we've missed anything or so you can understand it better, we can go through them here now. So here we've got the paid version here on my notebook computer. Now this is an older MacBook Pro and on my new very new Mac mini, a very powerful system here. I've got the free version running right here. And if we take a look along the bottom, we'll see that there are a few extra menu options that I have on my paid version, which I can explain to you as we go through. But let's start with the video story. The, the, the business that I was talking about earlier, if I go in and I open my video settings right here, here it is on my free version and let's open it as well on the paid version here we can see that we've got all the same settings until we go here. Let's go into that virtual background because this is an older MacBook and this MacBook doesn't have quite as much processing power as my new one. And we take a look here, I have the ability to choose a virtual background, but they're all static backgrounds. I can turn it on, on and off the green screen, but I've got images that I can put in the background. Let's take a look at my free version which is on a more powerful computer, I go into the virtual background and I have the ability to add video backgrounds as well because there's more processing power here. It's not always gonna be the free or the paid version. There are other parameters that might determine the features and functions that you have available to you. So that's number one. Let's quickly go through a few of the other features that we have here, the most important ones. Security is of course always important and almost all of the security features are identical between the two. Here we have the ability, if we look at the free and the paid version, I have the ability to lock meetings once they've started, to have the meeting room in place, to turn on and off access to the screen share and the chat, uh, and allowing participants to name and rename themselves. So the privacy settings, as far as security, are identical in both the free and the paid version. As we go along, our screen sharing options are virtually identical. The recording options are going to be different. In the free version, I'm only gonna be able to record to the local computer, whereas with the paid version, of course, I can record to the cloud or to my local computer. Ah, Steve, here's the one, something that you didn't mention. They have something called breakout rooms. This is very cool. If you have a large meeting of say 25 people, you can break those 25 people into five breakout rooms for them to do group work and then bring them together at the end. That seems like a really advanced feature. Not surprising it's not available in the free version, Steve. I can understand that you're probably saying because here it is in the paid version, but it is actually available in the free version. It's just not enabled yet. You see, if we go into our Zoom settings, you have to go into the, your account settings in your browser and you go into your settings here if you scroll through, you have access to all of the same settings virtually as you do in the paid version. And if I scroll down a little ways, I will get to somewhere down here, breakout rooms. There it is. And you see, it's just not turned on. If I turn it on, next time I launch a session, it will be available to me there in the menu. So there we have the same functionality available to me. Now I'm gonna show you one other thing because this is another place that there's a difference. When I'm running a meeting, I always like to enable this. Go under the view menu and turn on show and manage participants. Now there's only me in the room right now for both of these meetings. So only, so there's no, you don't see a roster of individuals in the meeting. But when you're actually doing a meeting, 
this is a great window to have open because you can manage the microphones and the cameras of your participants and actually get additional feedback from your participants through this if you're in the paid version. Here in the free version, you can see that I can invite new people into the meeting and this is the same in both. So this is where, how you create a link to invite people into the meeting and take a look here. Even in the free version, it has, actually, let me open both of them. I'm going to open the invite in both the free and the paid. Oh, the paid one has a few extra options, kind of automatic integrations with email, whereas this is just going to create a link. Not quite as functional, but it does include a password if you choose to password protect your meetings, which is very cool. Both of them include passwords. So that is there. But the other big difference here is along the bottom in the free version, you can mute all of your participants or unmute all of your participants if you choose to. But in the paid version, everybody has access to these, to these kind of comment buttons where they can be clicking yes, no, showing their hands, asking you to go faster or slower, repeat something. So they've got those little icons that allow them to give you some dynamic interaction during the meeting. That's a nice feature. Most people miss it, but that is something that's not available in the free version, or at least I haven't been able to find it in the free version, that is available in the paid version. So that is another kind of one of the subtle differences between the two versions. But for the most part, you're seeing the exact same functionality. Other than the time limit, they, they, you really are not missing too much if you're delivering your meetings in Zoom using the free version. Of course, that time limit is a huge issue. Hold, keeping your meetings to 40 minutes is quite arduous for many people. So and for the price of Zoom, the functionality it gives us, especially in this day and age where it's becoming for many of us our prime communication tool, it's probably well worth spending that little bit of money on a monthly basis. At least I think it's worthwhile. Are you there? Yeah, okay. okay, I'm reco I'm recording this and I'm having I'm having a, a video remorse because I sent you the video yesterday uh, which is the difference between Zoom free and Zoom paid, right? And I forgot this. I am just I'm recording this and I'm going to send this to you. So I forgot that in the paid version of Zoom, you can broadcast live to Facebook or to YouTube or to Facebook's workspace or workplace. So you can take oh, yeah, you can. I, and it, yeah, and, and I completely forgot to mention it. And here I am looking like a looking, well, looking like I just got up because I just got up. But there, here it is. So can you take the video that I made you edit that you were uploading to YouTube right now? And can you add this little yeah. bit that I'm sending you right now? And then can you find a way to fit it in the video nicely for me? Yes, of course I can. That's awesome. That's just awesome. Now, I would love to hear more of your comments and questions. Did I miss anything? Did I misrepresent something? I know you will tell me in the comments, and I promise you, I read each and every comment, even if we don't have time to reply to each and every comment. But I appreciate you asking the questions and letting us know how we're doing. If you've not yet subscribed to this channel, what the heck are you waiting for? We have a whole series of videos on using Zoom, which I encourage you to watch at your leisure. Please, if you've enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up, like the video, share Share it with your friends and family, and until next time, I am Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle. <laughs>